All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Chinese spacecraft pack, which is being made by forum user Ice Covery. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build several different Chinese spacecraft. And this thing is a pretty impressive mod with some pretty well detailed parts that I'm very much liking at the moment. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a gander at what all it does add in. So let's grab a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake and head to the mod filter where you may notice we have a few more things than normal and that is because this mod does actually have a handful of prerequisites to get it to function properly. So uh, the first of those is the raster prop monitor and then the Kerbal inventory system and real shoot parachute system. Now technically there is a fourth called comfortable landing but you don't actually have to worry about downloading that one as it's another mod made by this particular mod maker so it already comes pre-packaged but you will have to go and grab the other three. And with that out of the way let's turn off everything but ICSP and have a look at these parts where <laughs> I really should start by apologizing for my potentially horrible pronunciation of all of these. So let's start with the Xianzu uh, re-entry module. Is it Xianzu or Xianzo? I, I, I never know. Again, the pronunciation. Yes, yeah, so let's grab this thing and it is a pretty cool and well-made command pod there that can hold up to three Kerbals, minimum of course of at least one to operate, has a built-in data transmitter, some solid rocket boosters in it that have a uh, max thrust of 20 28 kilonewtons and an ISP of 154. Though, <laughs> you really don't have to pay much attention to that considering they only burn for about a second or two and the purpose of them is to make sure you have a softer landing rather than just slamming into the ground or the water, etc. Which is quite nice. Now, of course, we also do have here a lifting surface, RCS, a reaction wheel, a crew report as per usual, electric charge of 2,000, monopropellant of 50, 50, and a small little amount of solid fuel at 1.5. And another thing that actually doesn't show on here, but is really cool about the re-entry module, and I think probably one of my favorite features of this whole mod, is that when you are coming in for a landing, there is a uh, landing sequence which you can activate. And then, once you get close to the ground, the little small solid rocket boosters will automatically fire and if you land in the water it will inflate some you know little buoy things and a little raft for your kerbals it is awesome i really love that feature of this particular re-entry module it is pretty cool now let's move on to the next part here which is the tian gong laboratory module which again requires one crew member to operate but can have up to two does also have a built-in data transmitter. It is, of course, a functioning science lab and has its own reaction wheel, crew report, and 4,000 electric charge and is a pretty impressive part there. I especially, if we flip this around briefly, love the detail of all the little tanks, etc. in there. We have the uh, wastewater tank, the normal water tank. Very, very cool. And as you can see, some built-in RCS uh, modules on this thing as well for control and if we pop it back up this way our lovely place here for our docking ports just all in all a very cool part and then the final command pod we have here is the Tienzo a cargo module which this one if we pop that on there is uh, actually an unmanned command pod this time as it is a cargo module, but does have a built-in data transmitter, Kerbal inventory system with 2,000 liters max volume, built-in RCS as you can clearly see by all the little RCS ports there, reaction wheel, SAS, and 3,000 electric charge. And this is really the main reason why uh, the Kerbal inventory system is a necessity because, well, we have this giant inventory in here for you to use, which is quite cool, so you can take up quite 
quite a bit of parts into space with this. I mean, it is the purpose. It is a cargo module. Now, the uh, next section is in fuel tanks. Oop, I almost skipped those, didn't go into engines. The first of our uh, fuel tanks here is the Tian Gong service module, which of course goes with uh, this space station here. And let's just pop it up there. As you can see, it does have a couple of different attachment points, and those are used for the antenna, which we'll have a look at in a little bit, as well as the solar panels. Now, all in all, it's a pretty good little uh, service module with some built-in RCS engines and 300 mono propellant, which is very important because the engines we'll be looking at in a moment are all mono propellant based engines. And then the next one we have is the Tienzo service module, again with some built-in RCS, quite a bit more in fact than the uh, Tian Gong service module here, and this one holding 750 mono propellant. All in all, a good thing. And again, we have some attachment points for antennae and solar panels. Now we move on to engines, and the first of which we have is the Shenzhou service module, which wasn't with the other two because this one actually has a built-in engine in it, which if we pop it down here on the bottom, you can see right there. Now not only does it have that, but it has of course a built-in data transmitter. The engine has a max thrust of 10 kilonewtons, 200 190 on the ISP, has built-in RCS, as you can see by all the various RCS ports, 5,000 electric charge, and 300 mono propellant. A very, very good thing there. The next engine we have is the Tian Gong main engine, which has only 5 kilonewtons of thrust, 300 ISP, again using mono propellant, and is just a nice small little engine right there. And lastly, we have the Tianzhou main engine, back up to 10 kilonewtons of thrust, 300 ISP, and again, mono propellant. And has four lovely nozzles there. Very cool. Now, uh, when we have nothing in command and control, nothing in structural, and, and in coupling, though, we actually have a fair few things. Now, again, we have basically three systems here the Xianzhou, the Tiangong, and the Tianzhou. And basically, that's how we have them for the docking ports too. We have a docking port for the Shenzhou, which I need to flip around there, perfect. As you can see there, just a very interesting design, little uh, band there, another central tube, and then up top with our nice logo there, well, the CMS logo. We then have the Tian Gong docking port, which is slightly different. Instead of the little band at the bottom, it is just sort of that central tube, and also has a little uh, warning symbol there for, I guess, gears and, you know, don't get your hand caught. And then finally we have the Tianzhou docking port, which has that same warning, but also another warning for... I think that's heat. I'm not entirely sure on that. And of course, a slightly different design yet again. It's sort of the main tube, but it's a bit uh, taller or wider, however you want to put it. And then down here we have a uh, separator, which is the Shenzhou RMCM umbilical. Now this actually goes down here on the Shenzhou capsule. And as you can see, it uh, attaches right there and there's an internal attachment point. And you'll notice we have two different attachment points. The top one goes into the Shenzhou re-entry module, and the bottom one actually goes to this service module here to connect the two together. So a very nice little bit of work there, and a, a lovely piece. And of course, is a separator. Now, and we have nothing in payload, nothing in aerodynamic or ground, so we move on to thermal, where we have the Shenzhou heat shield. Let's just pop this baby down there, and perfect! A lovely heat shield for use with the re-entry module. Now in power again we have three items one for each of the modules the first the Shenzhou service module solar panel and it goes right on these attachment points right there and of course extends to provide you with all the power you'll need and of course you'll have one on either side. Now next is the Tian Gong solar panel now this goes on the Tian Gong service module whichever one of those these are. I actually think it is this one question mark there we go but we'll pop it on there anyways and excellent it's a bit wider and less long of a solar panel but 
very useful. And then next we have the Tian Zhou solar panel, which if we pop on there, is again just a third style of solar panel for that particular ship. Very good. Now on communication, we have only two this time, the Tian Gong high gain antenna, which actually goes on to this attachment point over here. I think I have to flip this thing around perhaps. Yes, there we go. And of course, extends outwards. And then we have the Tian Zhou high gain antenna, which goes right there and again, extends upward very good to have now we have nothing in science and in utility though we have the shenzo orbital module which as you can see has a lovely blue cone up there and that is because this has a built-in camera for you to view through the raster prop monitor now besides that it is actually an unmanned command pod but does have the ability to hold two kerbals has a built-in uh, data transmitter decoupler it does have built-in rcs reaction wheel sas crew report 3000 electric charge and a hundred mono propellant and of course that is where the docking port would go on to this for it to then attach to whichever it needs to attach to and the final two parts are the parachutes for the Shenzhou down here and they go into these two circular bits now the first parachute is the main parachute and as you can see has an internal attachment point that just goes right in there and the second is a spare parachute just in case that goes right there and all in all a wonderful set of parts for building these three different Chinese spacecraft but quite frankly you could build much more with them and this isn't all that will be a part of this mod the mod maker is actually hoping to add in additional Chinese spacecraft including some potentially uh, or ones that are theoretical such as the Chinese Mars lander Chinese Mars rover that of course don't exist yet but uh, uh, those may be additions in the future which would be quite cool now let's actually take a look at a couple of these well actually we're just gonna look at the Shenzhou altogether because I already do have the Tian Gong and Tianzo in orbit that we'll look at here in a moment but let's look, take a look at the Shenzhou spacecraft altogether as I think it is probably the most interesting of them since you have the service module here for all your orbital maneuvers you have your orbital module with a nice uh, you know docking port and a place for Kerbals and then your re-entry module here with all you need to survive the return to the mainland all in all a very very cool ship now we're actually going to go out onto the landing pad here real quickly because we do have interiors for these three different crafts and so let's take a look at them here well, actually no technically just the two craft because <laughs> the Tianzo is uh, robotic so we have the Tian Gong laboratory module here the Tian or uh, Shenzo re-entry module and Shenzo orbital module all of which have interiors so let's take a look at Valentina who is down here in the Tian Gong laboratory and take a look at her view a beautiful little orbital lab where apparently they're playing Kerbal Space Program and watching anime which I mean uh, whatever you want to do that's that's your your thing and then of course our food etc over there now we have a second seat for another Kerbal and apparently some laptops uh, on the walls there and yeah just a lovely little interior quite roomy more roomy than you would expect now of course this is the re-entry module uh, kind of cramped we do have a beautiful little globe down there though which is quite cool and all the various glass cockpit pieces from raster prop monitor and of course one two three different seats in here and finally the orbital module where we have spaces for two Kerbals though oddly only one spacesuit hmm <laughs> uh, but yes we have some uh, various things in here and yes yeah, some nice nice little two seat bits quite cool to have and again a bit more roomy than you'd expect but yes that is the various interiors so let's actually head back to then I'm gonna have to go back to the Space Center and then go and do another launch because I want to show off 
that landing system. So let's actually just clear this thing off. Wonderful. And we're gonna grab a really crappy little thing I made earlier, which is just called landing test. And it is purely just the Shenzo re-entry module. And that's it. And we're gonna pop this thing up into the air and land it in the water so that you can see the solid rocket boosters go off. And then of course the inflatable system. So let's go to ship lander here. Uh, current. Let's actually go two out, should put us well into the water, I believe. And let's do 500 feet. Yeah, that should work, hopefully. And there we go. Let's actually activate it to drop the heat shield. We no longer need that. Then, of course, our main parachute, which does go quite a ways up. It's quite a large parachute, really. There we are, beautiful. And we slowly do float back down to the surface. But the important thing is if we right click on here, we have the pre-landing mode. And this is what's going to turn on those little solid rocket boosters and then inevitably inflate the inflatables. So if we just go to activate that, I actually think I probably put us up a bit too high, so let's let's uh, fast forward a bit until we're getting closer to the water here. All right, go to 4x. Perfect, perfect. We're still dropping fairly slowly, but hey, that's my own fault for actually releasing the parachute. <laughs> and we still, of course, do have a secondary parachute if we do need a spare, so we could cut it, but with my luck, I'd never turn it on again in time for, you know living but eh, I mean it should only take a second here once we go up to oh yeah we can only go up to 4x but we're getting closer we're getting closer and soon soon we'll be able to see the inflatables which I just find amusing it makes a little raft your Kerbals can get into it it's pretty cool so there we go we'll go back to 1x maybe <laughs> all right maybe we continue on forward a little bit there we go, 50, 30, okay, okay, there we are. I have the giant shadow over there. That is a big shadow for that parachute. Beautiful. Let's turn off our UI and wait for the solid rocket boosters to go. I did activate the thing, right? Yes, I activated the thing and momentarily, we should see the solid rocket boosters go. There it is. And we land and inflate, perfect. Perfect. And isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I don't know why, but I just really love that. So let's uh, get Valentina out here and let's just uh, let go. Now my one problem I have with this, even though I do love this whole inflatable thing, is that if we get Valentina out here, she, um, she, she kind of is above it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems that the collider is right there along the top surface, so this indention bit here isn't quite properly, uh, what's the term? Oh boy, I'm, it doesn't have physics, or colliders, colliders, there's the word, there we are, perfect. So, but we do still have the cool inflatable. Now let's actually head to the tracking station where I have a Tian Gong up in orbit. Which yeah, should be you. I had to wonder for a second there why I had three things and I remembered. Oh yeah, we just dropped the thing in the water. But here we go, our lovely Tian Gong and Tian Zhou uh, bits up in space with our Kerbals enjoying their science and getting re... I guess... Crude, or not crude, but resupplied, oh my god, words today, by the Tienzo. And it is a beautiful little addition. I do quite enjoy the whole look of everything. Very cool parts, very useful. They can be used for more than just their own things, and you can build all sorts of stuff with them. And hopefully, in the future, we'll have even more. But that is really going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, that you do come back for the next and oh I'm forgetting of course my friends if you do want to check out this mod for yourself you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual but now that's going to be it so uh, yeah I hope you all have a wonderful day and that you do come back for the next episode but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one